facing them unnecessarily. For example, to find sunken treasure or mineral wealth. It's usually a fool's game that doesn't pay off. When there is a payoff, it sometimes does terrible things to the treasure hunters. There was a time when I wasn't so wise about it myself. Then I was searching for manganese ore, the source of a valuable metallic element vital to national defense. On the surface, my partner on this particular trip waited impatiently. He was Pete Otis, a geologist that I had met only a few weeks before. Manganese nodules aren't too easy to spot. They look a lot like ordinary rock. But Pete had told me just what to look for. In my concentration on the search, I had stayed down a bit too long. I noticed that my mind was beginning to slow down. Then I saw something that made me forget the manganese. The sharks were beginning to spiral in on me. I knew what that meant. I had a few minutes at most to get out of the water. In shark-infested waters. Sharks are cool, calculating killers. But their mood can turn to frenzy in an instant. I was trying to surface slowly, and they were moving in on me. One of them came in for a strike. With a reflex action, I jabbed at him with my spear gun and shot the spear instinctively. At that close range, it went right through him. As he struggled, I knew that I'd have to escape before the others closed in. See any signs of the stuff? Oh, you were down a long time. Too long. I feel like somebody's been massaging me with a baseball bat. You had to use your gun? Oh, yeah. Shark. Must have come pretty close this time, huh? Uh, yeah. Too close for comfort. Mike, you sure you didn't see anything that looked like manganese ore down there? Yeah, I'm sure. I wish I knew how to dive. Yeah. You and me both, friend. Oh, I didn't mean that as a crack, Mike. It's just that, well, I'm a geologist and you're not. I recognize that first chunk of ore the minute I dredged it up in a coring device. Practically pure manganese. There's a fortune waiting for us down there, Mike. All you have to do is find it. Uh, well, maybe if you had a better idea where it was located, I could do that little thing. Well, I thought I knew exactly where it was. You didn't. All right, so I couldn't dump it in your lap. I cut you in for a third of the proceeds, didn't I? Well, work for it. That's all for the day. What? You mean to say you're going to waste the rest of the day? Now, you listen to me, partner. Because I'm only going to say this once. I'm not going to wind up in any hospital. Not for you, nor for all the manganese from here to Cape Horn. I'll dive only when I feel that I'm in condition to dive. You understand that? Sure, Mike, sure. Okay. Mike, anything you say goes, on or under the ocean. Yeah, all right. 
Now you take it easy, I'll whip up some chow. I had a good night's sleep, and I felt a lot better the following day as we headed out to continue our search. The sea was calm, if anything, a little too calm. Pete Otis was once more the same polite fellow that I'd met in Costa Buena a few weeks before. The fellow who'd sold me on the deal by reminding me how important manganese is to our national defense. And I was again heading for Deep Bottom. sudden I was startled by a big octopus. It can be a frightening sight. Actually, he didn't want to bother me any more than I wanted to bother him. of being deep below the surface is that a diver can't see what's going on above. I had no idea that a change was taking place in the weather. soon be gone that I would have to surface. Meanwhile, the sharks seemed to be getting more curious, so I began to watch them closely. I was so absorbed in watching them that I didn't realize that I was swimming above a giant clam. I struggled with all my might, but I couldn't free myself. I knew that if I couldn't get out, my air would soon be used up and I would drown. It seemed as if my foot was being crushed. But Mike, I don't want to... Leave it to me, will you? Pull the hook. The storm was heavy and mounted. 
wondered if we'd have time to reach shelter. It was hard to keep the boat on course. But as soon as we had rounded the point of the island and reached the lee side, we were out of the worst part of the storm. We soon reached Pescador Landing. too long to be trapped out in weather like this. This is a friend of mine, Pepita, Mike Nelson. Hello. Hello, oh, Pepita. This storm might break any minute. We better get out of here. Yes, come up to the house where we'll be safe there. Oh, no, we'll find a place, oh, all right. please, come. Keep it secrets from me, huh, Pete? Will there be something else? No, thanks, Pepita. That was delicious. It is nothing, senor. It was my pleasure. Mike, let's get going. Ah, you came home from Barranca through this storm. <laughs> what is a little thing like wind or rain to a man like me? Oh, so you finally came back, eh? You're soaking wet. You must get into some dry clothes right away. I have spent half of my life wet. Who is your friend, Pedro? This is Mike Nelson. Senor Valdez. Senor Valdez? Hey, your daughter sure a wicked cook. We both want to thank you for your hospitality. <laughs> for nada. Tell me, you are uh, another one of these men who makes money out of rocks? No, I'm a diver. A diver, eh? Me? I am the greatest fisherman in the Pacific Ocean. All of it? All I have seen. Well, you bring me good news after all this time? I give him a rock, a rare rock that I bring up with a net. You should see how excited he is. We are going to be rich, he says. And then, nada, I cannot even find him. I thought you said you dredged it up with a coring device. Now, don't jump to conclusions, Mike. You know what my conclusion is. You lied to me. You lied to him, too. Don't call me a liar. <laughs> Make all this in my house, it is my fight. jumped to the conclusion and provoked Pete into slugging me. But I could see that even if I was right about Otis, to break up the deal would leave Esteban without anything for his discovery. Shouldn't have done that, Mike. No, why not? I know I clipped you first. Just said things about me I wouldn't take from anyone. Well, they were true, weren't they? No. Look, I cut you in for a third of this. Half of my two-thirds share goes to Esteban. Come on. I never figured it any differently, and I still don't. You sure kept it a secret. Well, what's the sense in building up his hopes? They may never find a field. And even if we do, it may not be worth working. And that's the truth. What you say could be true, Pedro. All right. Let us try it. We are all together, let us work together. What do you say, Senor Nelson? Okay, but call me Mike, eh, amigo? Okay, Mike. And so when the storm subsided, 
the three of us set out for the place where Esteban recalled dredging up his rare stone. He had not marked it on any chart, but with the sixth sense of an experienced fisherman, he was able to find the spot. I trusted Esteban, but I had great reservations about our other partner, to put it mildly. What this line is for? My safety line. It helps me up and down. Ah. I don't like it, Mike. Why? This is where you found the manganese? I think so, but... There are many sharks here. Oh. Well, I can always tell when they're getting a little too curious. You have been in the water with the sharks before? Oh, yeah, lots of times. So far, no scars. Mm. I wish I knew how this diving was done. Then... I could go down and help you, give you some protection. Uh, which is grasses. But mad, all I do is talk. There's something else you can do. Eh? Shall I use that? Uh, well, of course. I shoot almost as good as I fish. Good. Now, when I go in, and later on when I come up, if the sharks give me any trouble, you shoot them up. With the greatest of pleasure. Just be sure you don't shoot me. Amigo, don't say such a thing, even as a joke. Good luck. I wasn't sure that sharks were the only danger we had to face. And I had more than one reason to want Esteban to have the rifle. Gives it to me like you give a toy to a baby. What are you talking about? This gun. He gives it to me so I will be occupied. Clearly, I can be of no help to him where he is now. He doesn't need any help. How can you know that? Ah, uh, we were wrong, Pedro. It's not right that he should risk his life for our profit. As I began the underwater search once again, I felt much more hopeful. With Esteban's guidance, we were much more likely to find what we were after. There were plenty of sharks in this area, too, but they were keeping their distance, and I didn't see any reason not to go ahead. for sure. I wanted to get to the boat with the specimens as fast as I could. Same kind of rock. That's nothing compared to what could be hidden or out of sight. It's tremendous. What do you say, Caballero? Make you happy? Oh, see, see, my daughter, what this will mean to her. There's still plenty to do. We've got to mark it well, and we have to file our claim. Well, the position is marked in the chart. That's not good enough. You've got to go down with the marker boy and mark it well. Fasten it securely, dead center if possible. Dead center it'll be. <laughs>
didn't know what was happening above, but I did know that I was the only one that could start the engines. I had quietly taken care of that because I didn't trust Otis. and the sharks were below me. The sharks sensed trouble, and they seemed to be gathering for a kill. In my desperation, I remembered an old frogman trick. I left Otis a target to shoot at bubbles of air from my diving lung. I took one last deep breath and swam for the other side of the boat. sharks were gathering fast. I took care of Esteban first. We headed for Costa Buena to complete the two jobs that we still had to do. Register our claim and turn our former partner over to the authorities. Hi there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? When there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of Sea Hunt. <laughs>